Hey, this is James Glass, and I'm here working on my tiny home tonight, and I wanted to talk to you about the importance of protection plates. Sometimes they're called nail plates or anti-nail plates, um, and they are vital, 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 so that you don't damage both wiring and plumbing in your home when you put up drywall. So what's a, what's a protection plate? Well, it's that, basically. So in this case, I've got a cold and hot water line running up to my shutoff box for my washer. And I, when I go ahead and put this drywall on, I'm not going to know, you know, exactly where these lines are. And I could run a drywall screw right into them. And obviously if it was a water line, I'd know immediately if I had a leak. Um, but more insidiously, if it's an electrical line, you might not. And you could get an arc fault, uh, which can result in a fire. Especially if you don't have an alt, if it's not an arc, arc, arc fault protected circuit, um, or in the case of a sewer line like this, um, you could uh, you could slowly release methane and sewer gases into the house. So when do you use these things? Well, I use them pretty much all the time. Code minimum building code here um, in the United States requires that they're used any time the pipe or the cable. Um, is within 1.25 inches of the surface of the stud. I, I just use them everywhere. That That's a little bit more than 1.25 inches to this 3-inch um, um, PVC, but I went ahead and I put, in, I put a protection plate on each side. I mean, you know, the plates, are, that's like a 74-cent plate. Um, <clears throat> I just went ahead and did it. Uh, you know, same as say, over here, too. You can get protection plates in different sizes. Um, you can get these smaller ones, and you can get these neck size up ones, and you can make your own protection plates. And I'll show you an example of that before I close out the video. So I have this energy recovery ventilator here, and it hooks up to two four-inch duct galvanized duct lines that run in the ceiling, and then run down about halfway on the uh, on the other side of this wall, and they go to a single penetration for intake. There's a special intake and outtake uh, hood over there. Well, um, those four inch lines are very close to the surface of the wall, um, within millimeters. And I, uh, there will be a mini ductless mini split hanging over here later, but somebody might want to put a painting or, you know, whatever up, they drill a hole in the wall or they run a screw in the wall. And next thing you know, now there's a hole in my intake or exhaust for my energy recovery ventilator. So what I did before I put this drywall up, is I went out and got some um, a big sheet of metal. Um, I, I went out and got a pretty good size um, 24 gauge piece of uh, flat roofing before it went through the. There's a we have Lions Metal Roofing here in town. You can go down and get 24 or 29 gauge flat stock before they run, run it through the dies. And I went down and got a good sized piece of metal and I screwed it across the studs where my four inch pipes were and then put my drywall up. So you'd have to work really hard to get through that 29 gauge if you're running a screw or a nail in. And so, yeah, protection plates, super important. And, um, you know, you've got you to gotta run them everywhere. There's a wire. By the way, um, don't forget to caulk all of your cable and plumbing penetrations um, on the top plate and bottom plates, wherever there is a fire concern. Um, I also, of course, do it for air control. Nailing plates, protection plates, super duper important so that you don't pierce the cable or the plumbing line. Hey, thanks for watching.